Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Well, Rwanda is the first country in the world where women hold a parliamentary majority. And now laws have given women rights to land, employment, opportunities and education. Now, in the most remote parts of the country, gender equality is going a long way to reducing poverty. We get more in this report from the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Like most farmers here in the Kirehe district of eastern Rwanda, Epiphany Mukamurenzi is up with the sun. She and her husband Bosco and Datimana work closely together during the daily morning milking session. This would have been unthinkable just a few years ago when Epiphany was confined to household chores while Bosco exclusively handled anything to do with their income. Things started to change when they took part in a livestock training program five years ago. My husband and I used to be very, very poor. We fought all the time. Everything changed when we received this cow and the training. In the past, my husband would spend our money without consulting me. Our family is so different now. We live in harmony and we're both involved in financial decisions. The training Epiphany and her husband received is part of a government project called QAMP, which aims to increase farmers' incomes and food security. Supported by IFAD, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and HAFA International, qualifying families receive livestock and are trained to care for them. But it doesn't stop there. Everyone who receives livestock is also trained on gender equality. Happiness has been brought back to this house. Gender training was crucial because I used to think that the money from the milk and the bananas was for me. The money from the beans and such was for the women. We've been taught that the money we make is for the good of the entire family. So far, about 6,000 families have gone through this training, and the project's Raymond Kamwe says it's essential for them to learn about the link between gender equality in the household and poverty. Gender Gender is a key part of our training program because we know the significant role that women play in lifting households out of poverty. Women are crucial for the agricultural sector, so we emphasize gender equality in farming so that they can contribute and share their vision for their family's future. It's all part of the Rwandan government's nationwide push for gender equality. The East African country is the first in the world where women hold a parliamentary majority and new laws have given women rights to land, inheritance, employment opportunities and education. We can't do talk about gender equality without talking the independence, the financial independence of women. So we want our women to be economic, economically empowered so that uh, they can face their future. To help women become more economically empowered, the QAM project is also trying out something new. It is called the Gender Action Learning System, or GALS. Raymond has been working with couples like Lidivine Musabimana and Gasana Muzehe to map out a common vision by using counseling, drawings, and visuals. Together, they have developed a shared strategy and measurable goals for their family's development. The training taught us how to work together in all aspects of our lives. Our love has come back and we share everything. We've built a toilet, renovated the house, bought livestock. Anything is possible now. And with Rwanda's focus on gender equality, anything is possible for many women. A recent study estimates that global GDP could increase by as much as 28 trillion U.S. dollars by 2025 if more women like Lady Veen and Epiphany participated in economic growth, and it looks like Rwanda is on the way to achieving that. Well, that report uh, was from the International Fund for Agricultural Development, a UN agency. Refugees in Europe are traveling from Turkey to Greece by sea in record numbers despite the winter cold and the first snow to hit some islands in years. Aid workers say they are struggling just to keep people alive and healthy before they depart for the next leg of their journey. 
Here's VOA's Heather Murdoch in Cairo with Hamada Asaram in Greece. About 1,600 people have been arriving in rubber boats on the shores of Greece every day since the beginning of the year. That's more than 20 times the amount of people arriving in January of 2015, a year in which more than a million people made the dangerous journey to Europe to seek asylum. And aid workers say the journey has suddenly become even more dangerous. And when they arrive on shore, the refugees' clothes are usually wet. It's now a health risk and uh, like health and safety problems with them becoming like frozen solid the second they come off the boats. Officials say the cold weather has also made the sea more deadly. In the past week alone, 19 people are believed to have drowned at sea, including three children and an infant. On land, travelers echo the refrain of earlier refugees from the Middle East and Africa to Europe. They say they didn't come because they wanted to, but because they had to. Syria is being bombed from the air. We are terrified for our women and our children. We were forced to leave. If you ask me or any Syrian here in Greece, nobody wanted to leave by his own choice. Everybody was forced to leave. Cold weather is expected to continue here in the coming weeks, and aid workers say, as a result, fewer people are arriving than last month. But as Europe strains to accommodate the people already on the continent, officials say the number of new arrivals may more than double in the coming year. Heather Murdoch, VOA News. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory. Well, coming up, the Liberian artist campaigns against corruption. Stay with us. At a berry farm in Mexico, Andy Sia with Frute, a Chinese food importer in Shanghai, is looking over the produce. Frute became one of the first Chinese companies to import berries from Mexico about a year ago. He says, for fresh products like raspberries and blackberries, we use air freight. In this way, the quality can be guaranteed. At this orchard in Jalisco State in Mexico, berries are hand-picked and shipped in special coolers to China, where there's a growing number of people developing an appetite for fresh berries. The president of Anna Berries, Mario Andrade Cardenas, says the climate in Jalisco gives his company a big production advantage. He says that makes us one of the countries which can produce berries in winter and spring. Mexican berry producers are optimistic they can turn China into one of the top berry markets in the world and in so doing perhaps put a dent in Mexico's $50 billion trade imbalance with China. For VOA's Bisbee, I'm Philip Alexio. How do you see the world? I see countries in turmoil. I see our planet changing. I see people at peace. No matter how you see the world, you'll get an unbiased and uncensored view of it on Voice of America, on television, radio, online, and mobile. In more than 40 languages all day, every day, millions of people tune us in. How do I see the world? On Voice of America. Well, observers say that corruption in the health sector can mean the difference between life and death. In Liberia, a country that was affected by the Ebola epidemic, a local artist campaigning against corruption in all sectors of the government says that health care is most affected when politicians and health care administrators divert the few resources for personal use. VOS Jackson and Vunganya has our report. The Atlantic Ocean provides a perfect backdrop on a windy day in Monrovia's Mamba Point. Dead water high fins litters the public beach, a reminder that the government is dealing with more pressing issues, like wiping out the Ebola epidemic that killed over 4,500 people in this country of six million. The country is recovering from Ebola, but people say that Liberia still suffers from a different kind of sickness, endemic corruption. 
Worldwide governance indicators suggest that corruption remains a serious problem in Liberia. One of the people speaking out against corruption in this West African country is a local musician, Henry Amezinto. He goes by the name Amaze. He describes his musical style as hipko, a local form of hip hop fused with the local dialect. I want my music to change this world, especially in Liberia where corruption has eaten us up. I want to bring, I want my voice to be heard out there and to change the whole corruption stuff and to minimize the corruption in Liberia. He recently launched that song, Corruption, Corruption. It is produced in collaboration with Osiwa and Accountability Lab Liberia, two organizations spearheading a campaign they're calling hashtag corruption must go. In the song, Amez laments the effects of corruption on his society. It's an everyday activity thing. It's something that affects the music, affects the school, affects our everyday activity. As no medicine in the hospital, no boats in the school, and even the music, it affects the music because our music don't go anywhere. Because I've seen so many corrupt officials embezzling money and going free. Reports show that corruption in Liberia is pervasive and affects almost all public sectors. Perhaps why Ebola was able to ravage communities without much of a functional healthcare system. Money that's supposed to go in you know, health sectors, money that's supposed to pay schools, money that's supposed to build clinics, hospitals. It's been going in people's pockets, fam in family homes, while the whole nation suffers. So I feel very bad about it. A Transparency International report on corruption in Africa says that Liberians pay more bribes than anywhere in Africa. Amay says that corruption is bred by a broken down value system that starts with how children are raised and how they are taught to understand the value of honesty in public service. We try to bring this message out that parents should be on at life, that you got to monitor the case as they grow up because if you allow corruption grows into them, if they go to higher ministry or higher entity, the whole country got to be corrupt. The consequences of corruption on a health sector is a system that can't deliver effective health care to its people. Most of our doctors are unpaid, the nurses are unpaid, and they don't do the proper job. For instance, if you got a patient and you rush to the hospital, they don't respond to that patient, maybe because that patient don't have sufficient money, so that patient end up dying, so it affects the health system deeply. I'm a skeptical of the millions of dollars pledged by the international community to help Liberia in its recovery efforts. I think it's a joke that one billion is going to go in a few family pockets. Believe me, we're never going to we're never going to feel the effect the effect of that. The general perception is that politicians and administrators can siphon millions of dollars from health budgets, money that was meant to buy medicines and to pay for qualified health staff for misusing or stealing funds can often derail efforts to defeat major health challenges such as the Ebola epidemic. For Voice of America, I'm Jackson Vungani, in Monrovia, Liberia. Well, it's time now for a short break. Still to come on Africa 54, the emotional wedding performance that it's taken the web by storm. We'll be right back. From science and technology, here's what's new. What's new? It's called Ely, a portable translator that works in real time. Ely's parent company, Logbar, put out a promo video of the device being used in Tokyo. You can check it out on YouTube. Hello. It looks like a USB flash drive hangs around your neck. It works without an internet connection. You just press a button and talk into Illy. When you release the button, it translates through the device's speaker, which is about four times louder than a smartphone. Excuse me, do you have a second? I have something amazing. I can speak Japanese. 
The device contains a two-language translation system, English-Japanese, Japanese-Chinese, or Chinese-English. Logbar says they plan to add French, Thai, Korean, Spanish, Italian, and Arabic. For What's New, I'm Todd Grossman. you see the world? I see countries in turmoil. I see our planet changing. I see people at peace. No matter how you see the world, you'll get an unbiased and uncensored view of it on Voice of America, on television, radio, online, and mobile. In more than 40 languages all day, every day, millions of people tune us in. How do I see the world? On Voice of America. Welcome back to Africa 54. Here's what's trending. A passionate wedding hacker that moved a New Zealand bride to tears is making everyone else cry too after being watched more than 13 million times. Video of the Maori dancer wedding of Alia and Benjamin Armstrong is being widely shared on social media. The bride says she was blown away by the performers. A hacker with its shouting, body slapping and exaggerated facial expressions is used in traditional Maori culture as a war cry to intimidate the enemy, but also to welcome special guests at uh, celebrations. And finally, sorry, Sai. Adele has outpaced the South Korean pop uh, star on the race to one billion views on YouTube. The streaming service has announced that her music video for Hello greeted its uh, one billionth view in 87 days, breaking the 158-day record held by Sai, Sai's Gangnam Style. YouTube says 17 videos have reached 1 billion views. There are several music videos on the cusp of reaching the 1 billion mark, including Shakira's Waka Waka, which was the official song of the 2010 World Cup held in South Africa. And that is what is trending today. Well, it's time for a Friday sports report, and here's Sonny Young with those latest on news, uh, sports news and notes. Hello, Sonny. Hello, Vincent, and sporty greetings once again to our Africa 54 viewers. Filipino star Manny Pacquiao says his fight on April 9th against American Timothy Bradley, the third bout between the two men, will be his goodbye to boxing. And it's sad to say that this is my last fight with... Uh, uh, Tim Bradley and um, sad to say that after this I'm going to retire and hang my hang up my gloves and focus to my another um, another uh, big responsibility in life to help the people Pacquiao talks about helping the people five years ago he was elected to the House of Representatives of the Philippines and he's expected to focus on politics when he leaves the ring. Pacquiao and Bradley held news conferences this week in Los Angeles and New York to promote their fight. Bradley won their first encounter in 2012 by a controversial 12-round split decision. Pacquiao dominated their rematch in 2014, winning a 12-round unanimous decision. Bradley says with a new trainer in his corner, he's confident of beating Pacquiao this time around. I believe the other two happened, you know, it, it was what it was, but I, I think this is completely different now. I think that, um, you know, the fact that I have Teddy Atlas, the fact that I'm, I'm more refined now, uh, I, I feel like I got better guidance going into this fight. I feel like I'm going to be the total package going into this fight. It just feels like like I never really had the other two the other two fights. So this is, uh, this is a whole different Bradley going in, man. My, mentally going in, uh, physically, um, I just can't wait to the day. At 32, Timothy Bradley is five years younger than Manny Pacquiao. 
He'll be defending his WBO welterweight crown against Pacquiao, who has won world titles in eight different weight divisions. Bradley has 33 wins, that one loss to Pacquiao in 2014, one draw and one no contest. Manny Pacquiao has 57 victories, six defeats and one draw. Last year, the Pac-Man lost to Floyd Mayweather in a much hyped championship fight that was a disappointment to many boxing fans. I'm VOA Sonny Young, and that's the sunny side of sports. Vincent? Well, thanks a lot, Sonny, and be sure to watch the sunny side of sports every Monday and Friday right here on Africa 54. Welcome back. It's music. It's time for a music makers segment. And today I'm delighted to introduce Sanusi Diallo, best known as uh, Galisi Jr., who was born and raised in Conakry, Guinea, but now resides here in the United States. Uh, Galisi, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You know, I know you started uh, music as a little boy. Right. Can you just share with us a little bit how it all began? Yeah, um, as you know, I grew up, uh, I was born and grew up in Guinea, Conakry. Uh, I started music at a very young age. Uh, back in Bushrapo, which was a favela uh, of the capital city of Conakry. And um, I remember playing, uh, gathering with my friends under the tree and playing with uh, tomato cans and mm -hmm. stick and a wire that we collect from the mechanic, acting like we were the Beatles of that time. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, that's how I started. And later on, uh, my first year uh, uh, at a public, at a private school called uh, La Fontaine, uh, that's, where, that's when I fell in love with art. Uh, and I also used to be a fan of a uh, French uh, author like Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And I remember one day uh, reading a book of Jean-Jacques Rousseau called Contrat Social. And uh, he had a quote that say, why did you take your happiness in somebody else when you can create your own happiness? You and decided to create your uh, own exactly, happiness. Exactly. And although the, you were not at that time influenced at all by, say, American artists. No, well. no, not at no. all. I was, I was simply influenced by MC Solar, which was a French artist. But now you're in the United States. There you and go. You're performing here. Yes, what are you going to perform correct. for us today? Oh, the, the first song I'm going to perform is called uh, Going Home. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, Going Home is about the life of, uh, is a project documentary about the life of two artists who have not been back home for the past 15 years. But also Going Home is about the land. The land is very important. You know, uh, uh, the land is, a, uh, is an essential part of our identity. Yeah. So when they take the land from a man, it's like you have to take his identity away. Look at the crisis going on today, in, uh, the crisis in Europe, yeah. Yeah. the crisis in Ethiopia with the drought. More than yeah. 400,000 children has been uh, displaced due to the drought. And uh, even today, I heard about the situation in, in Ivory Coast. Yeah. So, so this yes, is a, this is a powerful today. statement. Right. Well, how about you take it away now? All right, let's get let's it. Go. Uh. Yeah. It's been so long, I haven't seen you. Uh, losing hope, one day to see you. But uh, on a great morning, Chicago, I met good friend Momo John. Back to the big apple, we talk about project calling, go home. People say that I'm crazy, cause I did not have nowhere to go. Uh oh, we. Only God knows Going home New Jersey, USA hey, I'm going home Guinea, Conakry I'm going home Memphis, Tennessee hey, I'm going home Yaoundé, Cameroon I'm going home Chicago, Illinois I'm going home Kinshasa, Odyssey I'm going home Mali, Bamako, I'm going home. Raba, Morocco, hey, I'm going home. Washington, USA, I'm going home. Ethiopia, this a baby, I'm going home. Dine, Kona, Green, Things have changed, they ain't what it used to be. No, I'm going out of state, try to make ends meet. People keep telling me, they say DD don't want to do nothing. But I only God knows that I try so hard to get my paper straight. I'm praying that all my family pass safely through the Senate. Uh-oh, we only God knows. Let's go. Going home, New Jersey, USA. I'm going home. Guinea, Conakry. I'm going home. Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going home, Nairobi, Kenya, 
I'm going home, Kingston, Jamaica. Hey, I'm going home in a place better than home. No more. I'm So, this is beautiful sounding song there, and uh, really the sense of going home for you, it's going home to the land, regardless of where you're going. Uh, well, home is not just uh, where you belong, where yeah. you uh, are born, you, born, but it's also the place you find peace. Mm -hmm. You know, home is also the place wherever you find peace, mm -hmm. like United States of America, the land yeah. of opportunity and yeah. of freedom. So home can home U USA can also be home for a lot of people. Oh, right, right, and, and that's not all you have for us today. Uh, you still have another song for I us. I have another song for us. I like to take you back in the days, those old days when uh, we used to gather under the tree and yeah. act like we were the Beatles with our tomato cans yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, let You're me right. take you back in the day. That sounds good. Yeah. Take it away. All right. Hey. Uh -huh. I'm a winner, yo. I'm a winner, yo. Everywhere you go, anything I do. I'm a winner, yo. I'm a winner, yo. Everywhere you go, anything I do. I have a lesson when there's a will. There's a way since I done lesson. I've been dreaming about this. Hey, I'm a winner, yo. I'm a winner, yo. Everywhere I go, anything I do, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Hey. Yeah. Uh huh. You say you don't love me no more. You my baby, yo. You say you don't care about me, but you're still my baby, yo. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, oh, 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 oh. yeah, oh, oh. Uh -huh. We in the fall, feels like summer already. By the dawn, I will get that money. Think I might get the Maserati. Mighty mansion for Mama Rugi. Fit the scholarship to promote Guinea. 500k to AG. Damn, be you so much Trump. You wanna jump on my building? No, 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 ain't got no room in it. Yeah, see. Yeah. Great, I, I think I love this. Thank and we really, we are very grateful having you with us today. And uh, that's our show for today. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, you know, go ahead and let's, uh, you know, want to listen to you as we get out of this show today. All right, great. Go Sounds ahead, good. Sir. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. There you go. Mm. IT on BD, boost rapport, Mbemba, IA, est-ce que tu vois ce que je veux dire, non? Uh-huh. Je descends Bentley sur la corniche. Fantôme, j'allume ma dernière ish ish. Depuis mon j'ai toujours voulu réussir libre. J'ai des âmes et des frites, âmes riches. Tout frais de mon navire, les œufs ne veulent couler. Trop frais sur la piche, je peux voir des billets, billets. Je fais du 0 100 et de Welcome to English in a Minute. Here is an idiom that does not sound safe. Play with fire. That seems like a bad idea, right? Hey, did you hear the news about Susan? She has a new boyfriend. I've heard some bad things about him. Do you know him? Chris, right? Yeah, I know him. I think she's playing with fire by dating him. And you know what they say, you play with fire, you're, you're going, going to, to get, get burned. burned. It's pretty easy to understand where this idiom comes from. Children are taught from a young age, if they play with fire, they could get burned. As an idiom, to play with fire means to do something foolish or dangerous that could hurt you. And that's English in a Minute.